Welcome to Quebec, and this is the Earth Cache Cataclysm du Avril 27, 1894. This is a five, two and a half Earth Cache. There are only 12 with this rating worldwide, and there are only two in North America. One is in California, and one is right here in the province of Quebec. We're on an expedition in Quebec now to find as many of the remaining earth caches as we can to fill our 81 square fizzy grid with just earth caches. Currently we're at 72. This will make it 73. We did the earth cache on the St. Lawrence River and that brought us up to 72. We're hoping to get to 76 squares filled with only needing five more squares to bring us up to a full 81 square earth cache fizzy. Right now, we need to take a few more observations. We have to go check the height of the cliff, and we're gonna go look at the water above and below, and we have to go to the memorial site for where the landslide took place that killed uh, quite a few people and uh, took out a whole bunch of farms and farm animals all in one spot. On Friday, April 27, 1894, around 7.30 p.m., the entire region surrounding St. Alban was stirred by a terrible crash. The gory mill was completely swallowed up by the scree as well as eight farms and a sugar bush of 500 or 600 maple trees. The difficulty of this earth cache relates to the number of waypoints to visit and photos to take. Just like in all the other waypoints in this earth cache, we need to estimate the height of the bridge from the water surface, the width of the river at that point. And then we'll take a picture to show that we were there, just like the rest. Well, that's the end of that earth cache. Yeah, that was lots of rapids and falls. Yep, it took us the better part of the afternoon to do that, but there's a lot to do in that one. Yeah, yeah. you need to take a lot, a lot of time. Yep, it. it is a five difficulty earth cache, so you have to be prepared for a little bit of work. Now we're going to go off and do some more earth caching here in Quebec with some more unique ratings we don't have. We've driven two and a half hours north of Quebec City to another earth cache in Saguenay. Lyric Lass is just collecting some information from stop number two of this earth cache, which is a 5-4. And something that's very unique about this earth cache is that there are only 10 with that rating worldwide. And there are only five of them in North America and only one in Canada, the one that we're at now. There are two in Maine, there's one in Louisiana, and one in California. So we have a lot of work to do on this earth cache. So let's get hopping. There's a lot of places to visit for this one. It's, remember, it's a five difficulty earth cache and a four terrain. So let's go. As you come to this point in the earth cache, you're brought down two parallel roads and they're pretty rough. And you wonder, you know, what was here? It kind of looks like an abandoned campground. And at the end, this is question number seven of the earth cache, you walk down a little bit uh, of a trail right here and then you come to a spot where the ground suddenly just goes down. This is the former area of a subdivision that in, in 1971 a giant sinkhole or a mudslide took out a major portion 
of the town that was here. There's nothing here now. They must have bulldozed the whole thing. But this is one residential street, and then it just ended completely washed away in this accident. And that's what this earth cache is about. It's a bit daunting at first when you take a look at a, uh, an earth cache like this because uh, there's so much to it. There's a lot of information to absorb and there are so many waypoints. And I, I just looked at it and I thought, oh, I, I'm just totally confused as to what to do with all those waypoints. But it gets better once you're on the ground and you choose one that seems quite simple like I did. I picked the monument to start and then the cemetery. And then from there you just kind of pick them and then go through the questions and the waypoints and come up with uh, the answers bit by bit until you get the whole thing done. on that one and we're on to the next cache. Yep, another earth cache with a Target DT. And we'll talk about why we're doing all this on the next one. Right here on the bridge over the St. Lawrence River. We walked about halfway across the bridge to find a four, one and a half earth cache, and we're just finding some traditionals on the way back. So let this let's get this one back in place. And there we go. A different day, a different earth cache. Yeah, this one's called Mega Blocks, and it's a 5-3 earth cache. So this is absolutely not a park and grab. <laughs> <laughs> when you come to do this cache, check the tides and make sure you're here at low tide. There's tables you can find on the internet. This earth cache requires quite a bit of study. As we said, it's not a park and grab earth cache. You need to study four of 12 specific rocks that are listed and then you need to describe their altitude, uh, their height, their width, uh, the type of rock they're made from, what they're sitting on as, as far as the surface, and some other observations. I don't like all the cracking sounds. I'm stepping on something. <laughs> it's slippery. So while Lyric Lass is playing scientist, taking the measurements for that rock, I want to tell you why we've brought you here for all of these different earth caches. If you followed Cache Canada for a while, you know that we're after a completed fizzy grid based solely on earth caches. Now a fizzy grid is basically, it's, it's the pet name of your DT grid, so your uh, difficulty and terrain. If you look up in your statistics, um, you should be able to see if you are a premium member, uh, the DT grid, which is 81 squares. It has uh, 1 through 5 with half point increments, so 1, 1 1.52 down the one side, and then the other is uh, a difficulty or terrain from uh, 1 through 5 and the total combination is 81 squares and that grid is right here. This is our grid right now 
uh, for uh, earth caches before we update it to the number of earth caches that we've done. It's currently listed, you see here, at 72. So in this trip, we have added, uh, we're adding four uh, squares to this grid. Uh, this is this will be this earth cache will be number 76 of 81 so we just need five more uh, grids filled to complete 81 squares of the earth cache grid for the fizzy um, it is not an easy feat to do it takes a, it takes a lot of work and travel and I have to do some research but I don't think uh, that we could be able to complete the full grid it, staying in Canada. We will have to leave Canada at some point to get to the uh, 81st grid. Um, at the end of this trip, we've pretty much uh, done what we can in the eastern area of Canada. I have bookmarked all the earth caches that we could possibly get to uh, in order to fill the grid. But we're, hopefully we can do that this within two years. Uh, we're trying to get there. It's just it's one of the side games that you can play on your own in order to and kind of enhance the game. And you can do this for anything. Like here's a grid. Uh, this is for um, uh, virtuals. Um, we do look up different kinds of virtuals, and uh, it's just one of the things that you can do. So here she is. Well, how are we doing? We got all our answers. Yeah. Okay. Good. We got them. We got them all. We beat the tide. Beat the tide. Yeah, <laughs> now I took a, a shot of, uh, of a couple of rocks and we're going to go look at that again. As she went out where the water was to those rocks and now I'm going to go... In just a few minutes. In yeah. just a few minutes, tide is already coming up. You can already see um, those rocks um, that were already covered. Um, the one that was just starting to cover right here. It now has uh, about um, an inch and a half to two inches of water on it. So the tide is rising. We just got to make sure we get back to shore before it. One of the things that the earth cache talks about, this is a 5-3 earth cache, and there are only 13 earth caches worldwide with that rating. And there are only six in North America. Three of them are in California, two are in Arizona, and one is in lower New York State. There's only one of them in Canada, and it is right here where we are in the province of Quebec, and I find that quite fascinating. The higher up you go in the more difficult and more terrain, the higher terrain, the less there are of them in the world. And as we said, these are not parking grabs. These are uh, caches that require a lot more work, and it's just something that we really, really enjoy. And we hope that you found it fascinating too. In the description is the fact that these mega blocks are not from here. They're not part of that giant rise up there. They actually come from the other side of the St. Lawrence River, 35 kilometers away. 